Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, welcome. I'm Alex Von Bitter, and together with my partner, Julian Nicolini, and our dedicated staff, we are the innkeepers of this restaurant. It is our honor to welcome you on this joyous and auspicious occasion. We call this the ultimate power lunch. <laughs> we are all here to listen to and honor an extraordinary teacher and world leader, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, a leader whose wisdom and teachings continue to inspire people around the world to practice kindness and compassion, always. It's likely that none of us will ever experience, let alone understand, the hardship the Tibetan people have suffered. This resilient and optimistic culture has much to teach us about weathering difficult times and working towards a better world. Thank you very much for helping us support them in this meaningful and enjoyable way. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce the inimitable Tenzin Robert Thurman who has been a personal student and friend of the Dalai Lama since 1964. Robert Thurman once believed he was destined to spend his life meditating in some quiet place. But his teacher had a different challenge for his student, to translate the Buddhist canon and teach Indo-Tibetan Buddhist philosophy and history at major American universities. Professor Thurman has done just that at Amherst, Harvard, and Columbia, an extraordinary achievement. In addition, he has translated many texts and authored many books, the most recent being Why the Dalai Lama Matters. You will find it in your gift bag. And he assures me there will be a test. <laughs> Together with Tenzin, Tetong, and Richard Gere, Bob is the co-founder and current president of Tibet House, our host today. My dear friends, the wisdom needed for a peaceful world exists. And luckily for us, we have two extraordinary wisdom keepers here with us today. Please welcome Tenzin Bob Thurman. Thank, thank you, Alex. You're too kind. And the first thing I have to do is thank you for hosting this great power lunch. And really, Alex Van Bitter, thank you very much. It was, it was kind of a magical thing. His Holiness, uh, I was in Dharamsala, and His Holiness's uh, schedule here was all set, more or less. And we had him as a teaching yesterday and so on. And then we were kidding around, and I said, Your Holiness, you know, we really need a little extra. You need to come and have a lunch with us or something. We gather our troops and encourage people and so on. He says, Yes, I'll do that. He says, and then they were, his staff were looking all crestfallen, like, uh, and they, were, they already had every schedule. So then he holds up my hand like this in that meeting, and he says, this one is my oldest friend who's still alive. He says, <laughs> you, know, English, you, know, you know, Westerner, that means Westerner, since we've known for almost 50 years now. And um, so, this, so this happened, but I must say this, I want to say one thing. Power in the Buddhist world, in the Tibetan Buddhist world, what is the most powerful force in the universe is the power of compassion. So we mustn't confuse that for some sort of power of domination. It's the power of compassion. That is absolutely the biggest power. It absolutely lies at the base of life, and it is totally there. So I also, to, before I say another thing, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, the Kumo Gyalo Dundrup, who is the older brother of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And therefore, and in Tibetan, in Tibetan he is called the Yabshi Kumo, which means the head of the family of the Dalai Lama's family. So it's sort of like first family, you know? And uh, there's no Michelle, the Dalai Lama doesn't have a first lady, <laughs> but he has an older brother. And that's Gyalo Dundrup. And Gyalo Dundrup is fluent in Chinese, and he personally knew uh, all the Chinese leaders and Deng Xiaoping, and he negotiated different times when the, and all the efforts the Tibetans have made to be as moderate and peaceful as they can with the Chinese, still, unfortunately, to no uh, fruition. But he tirelessly has done this, Gyalo uh, Dandula, uh, and he is, um, he's a very young 80 now, I think, aren't you? He is. He's exactly 12 years older than me. It's a great honor to have you here, Kumo. Thank you for coming. And um, 
Tibet House has the mandate, and there are several Tibet houses. The original one was founded by Kumo Gyalo Dundrev, actually, who was here in New Delhi in the early 60s, when he noticed that the Tibetan refugees were coming out in exile after the Dalai Lama fled in 1959, 50 years ago, and uh, that they brought with them beautiful tankas and sculptures and works of art, and they were selling them for pennies, or you know, like tenths of a penny on the dollar, uh, to anybody because they were desperate. And he felt this was a great shame because this was the Tibetan cultural patrimony. And so he organized at that time the Tibet House in New Delhi and got a sort of authorization from Indian government and began to collect the works of art. Uh, right, Galala, you did. And you found different people to head it. And I remember in the early 60s when I went there, it was at 13 Jorbag at that time. And eventually now it's at Lodi Institutional Road uh, in a very nice building, given land given by the Indian government. And it's sort of like the cultural embassy of the Tibetan people. And then we founded one here, then there's one in Mexico City, there's one in Barcelona, there's one in London, and uh, they're popping up in Moscow and Tokyo and Paris, finally. And it's a difficult thing to do because our friends to the east of us, of Tibet, the neighbors to the east, they don't like Tibet houses, even though we don't have a political mandate. We are not agitating. If uh, His Holiness has said he sincerely w wishes to be part of China, if the Chinese would stop suppressing the Tibetans and their culture and their religion, he would be happy to sort of sign up and give them actual legitimacy, the legitimacy that they do not have merely by invading, occupying, and annexing. Since, since, since in the New World Order after the UN was founded, in fact, it doesn't give you legitimacy in a territory to invade, occupy, and annex. That's what we used to do in the 19th century, and uh, it no longer works, as Saddam Hussein discovered in Kuwait. And so uh, they know that, the Chinese people, and that's why they don't like Tibetan culture, because Tibetan culture proves to the world that Tibetans are a different people. They have their own language, they have their own history, they have their own spirituality, they have their own um, way of dancing and dressing and everything. They are actually different. But they are friendly with the Chinese. In ancient, ancient time, they had some wars. At one time, they were rough and tough Tibetans, and they, that's why the Chinese built the Great Wall, you know? <laughs> The Tibetans and the Mongolians and would, would just to ride down and do a little pillaging and so forth and do a little bit of... Uh, at one time they even conquered China for a brief time and, uh, in the 8th century. And the Chinese made a treaty of the Tibetans and paid them tribute to the Tibetans not to come and invade China. And uh, in the 8th century, and there are treaties, these are carved on stone and there's a, a irrefutable proof of this. But then in recent centuries, uh, different empires in China have been supportive of Tibetan Buddhism and the Tibetan Lamas, and Tibetans are friendly with the Chinese. They like Chinese culture, they like Chinese... And the people in eastern Tibet, like where His Holiness is from and Yalu Dundrup is from, are very near the border of China, and they can speak Chinese often, as well as Tibetan, and as well as Amdo dialect, and they're very friendly. So Tibet would be a major contributing partner to China, if, as a part of China, if the Chinese would, would uh, see their own enlightened self-interest and decide that the most popular man in the world, who is His Holiness the Dalai Lama, he, the Harris Poll in International Herald Tribune last December uh, saw him, he was voted ahead of the Pope, ahead of Angela Merkel, and uh, ahead of uh, lots of other people. And so the most popular man in the world, it's kind of silly to be making him uh, public enemy number one and running around trying to cancel his visa to go and hold hands with Desmond Tutu in South Africa. It's really, it's really kind of a silly thing. And uh, if they saw their enlightened self-interest and they took advantage of the most popular man in the world and he was their goodwill ambassador and he was their friend and he helped them kindle Chinese people's spirituality in China and he helped make the Tibetans happy so they would be a contributing partner to the Chinese. And think of the tourism that they would, the tourist dollar that they would achieve with the Tibetans running Tibet and people going there and seeing really happy Tibetans instead of a Chinese frontier town, you know, and Chinese occupation troops everywhere, you know. It would be really enlightened self-interest. And, and uh, this is what His Holiness's plan is about. But in the meantime, in case they don't take this up, and in case they stay the course, as a famous expression we've been hearing lately, didn't we, till recently, so we're, they're going to stay the course in a losing struggle uh, of trying to suppress the Tibetans, of trying to have a, continue a cultural revolution there, suppress their religion, keep them away from their beloved Lama, you know, and Lamas. And, uh, and break their spirit or something and turn, make, remake them into Chinese, which will never happen. Um, as long as they do that, it's very important in the world that we keep alive the flame and the reality of the Tibetan culture. 
and the t because the Tibetan culture is the, the awareness of the existence of the Tibetan people in the world's mind. My beloved Pico Iyer, my dear friend Pico Iyer, who many of you may know his books, and um, who is a great friend of the Dalai Lama himself, he once wrote about the Tibet house concept, a wonderful thing where he said, it's time in this world that we had these humanitarian and cultural organizations that served as Holocaust memorials before the Holocaust was completed to prevent the Holocaust. There has been a kind of Holocaust in Tibet. Over a million people unnaturally died in the 50s and 60s and 70s until the end of the Mao thing, uh, the Cultural Revolution, and before that. And uh, so it's, there has been one, but there still are six million Tibetans, and there are many in exile. And the key is that the world knows that they exist. The world does not turn their back on the Tibetans by celebrating their culture, by seeing their people dance, by loving their art and so forth, and, and seeing films about them, and meeting, meeting the Dalai Lama and other great lamas. And so that is the job of the Tibet houses in the world. And so anyway, it's a wonderful thing. And thank you all so much for coming. And uh, my pleasure to address you. And I managed to stop myself. OK? Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, I already said something. I see. Uh, mm. but, you know, I'm always ready to talk more. <laughs> but I think they really want to hear you at this time. So. Uh, <coughs> Uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. This is to should introduce Tupten Jimba, who Geshe and Professor Tupten Jimba, <laughs> who has a Geshe, he has a Geshe degree from Gandan Monastery, which is a very high, higher, harder to get than a PhD. Trust me, and he has a PhD from Cambridge University in England, and he's a fellow translator and a great, a good friend, mm. and His Holiness is translator. Mm. <sighs> Dear friend, dear, I say, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters of Tibet, Tibet. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so indeed, I'm very happy uh, to be here in a hotel hall, this uh, flower tree. Where I think some kind of cherry, isn't it? Yes, it's cherry. It's, I Japanese. think it's artificial. Artificial? Yes. Real artificial? Yes, oh, I, I see. think so. I thought, I thought it was But it's very well it. done. It's, it's uh, beautiful cherry. Uh, Therefore, it's peace all year round, your uh, th This is the, actually it's the right time, the cherry blossom. The cherry to blossom, uh, yeah. Real risk. So now, uh, I always appreciate my longtime friend, Professor Thurman, as he established this Tibet house in important city, New York. Uh, I think because of this very, very center of economy, uh, almost like I think a city of whole world like that, and a variety of people just passing through and this city, and also the United Nations also here. Uh, so at such sort of important place, Tibet House, where uh, you can see uh, Tibetan art, or Tibetan culture, Tibetan tradition. So it is very, very helpful, particularly at the time now, Tibet, Tibet is in these days, I describe the situation is something like this. One ancient nation with unique cultural heritage now passing through something like death sentence. 
Hmm. Very critical, very, very serious sort of situation. Uh, because, you know, and the Chinese communist hardliners and their view, the Tibetan separate identity or cultural heritage is source of threat of separation. I think almost, I think, 15 years ago, one party secretary, his name, Chen Guyen, uh, usually people consider him as a hardliner. Uh, at one party meeting, he actually mentioned the ultimate source of threat of Tibetan separation is Tibetan Buddhism. Right, right. Uh, so, you see, they, because of that kind of sort of attitude and out of fear, a lack of self-confidence, lack of holistic view. Mm -hmm. So now, today, as the, the Chinese authority, more narrow-minded, short-sighted, as in they uh, carry some kind of systematic sort of elimination, uh, systematic sort of method to eliminate Tibetan unique identity. So obviously, Tibetan, in order to get some job, must have knowledge of Chinese language. Whereas Chinese who are working in Tibetan area, not necessarily learn Tibetan. So autonomy is just name. So there is real now, we are passing through danger of uh, disappearing of Tibetan culture. So therefore, such period, uh, this kind of sort of work reminds people uh, there's Tibetan, I mean, unique Tibetan cultural heritage and that very nature of that culture is more compassionate culture, peaceful culture. So, really worthwhile to preserve. And from the viewpoint of Chinese people's side, unfortunately, that ancient nation now lost their traditional values, even such a cultural revolution period, they deliberately destroy their traditional value and suppose replaced by Marxism value. But that failed now. So old cultural heritage destroyed, but the new meaningful replacement failed to replace. So today, millions of Chinese, you see, they are, I think, a culture, something like culture of money. <laughs> so just, you see, think money, 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 money. And for that, all sorts of, sort of the method, including corruption. So, so much corruption. So, the whole society uh, seems now a very unhealthy society. Uh, so, for that respect, and after all, Buddhism is not alien to the minds of millions of Chinese. Like Mao Zedong's parent, a Buddhist. Mm. Mao Zedong come from Buddhist family. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I was told, the Chang Kishas, family, also Buddhist. Hmm? So the Mao Zedong uh, eventually she received uh, the idea or teaching from Karl Marx. <laughs> 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 and I think worst thing, from Lenin and from Stalin. <laughs> when I was in Peking, you see, there is one Kazoda, Chisha, just picture Like a kind of painting. Painting, painting. Yeah. One painting. Uh, uh, Stalin and Chairman Mao, and Chairman Mao hold uh, one book. So somebody is a friend, 
say, oh, that, that, well, that painting. painting is something very, very kind of meaningful. The Chairman Mo learning from Stalin. <laughs> 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 so, of course, his direct teacher, Stalin, <laughs> and then perhaps indirectly, Lenin. Uh, so these two famous teachers, uh, of course famous, but uh, not necessarily on the basis of truth or basis of positive. <laughs> 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 so in any way, <laughs> in any way, you see, that most populated nation, very important nation, ancient nation, uh, I think it is the world's interest built that ancient nation, healthy nation. That's very important. I think in that respect, Tibetan culture, Tibetan Buddhism can help, can make some contribution regarding the help building a healthy China. So therefore, uh, outside, in free country, the, the source of information about Tibetan culture uh, available to everybody. That's, I think, very, very important. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, once I visited this culture, Tibet House, Tibet House. Tibet House uh, but now I, I can't remember if it's in detail, because of that. What it looks like. Uh, Reduced to the, because of the material. Mm. And I feel it is important the, uh, when we say Tibetan culture, I often tell you Tibetan, the preservation of Tibetan culture, uh, not uh, a day, in the sense just a few dance or a few sings, right? songs, songs and Tibetan dress. Of course, that's part of Tibetan culture but not the real essential. The essential, uh, right from the beginning, uh, when we become refugee, is our top priority is preservation of Tibetan culture. Then, uh, at that, from that time, so we made two categories of Tibetan culture. One category of Tibetan culture is uh, a certain sort of, what is that? Uh, way of life. Our tradition, right. way of life, uh, that also related with uh, the uh, social system or economic conditions, all these things, and the climate also is involved. Mm -hmm. That part of habit, that part of culture, is a time change, lifestyle change, uh, will change. The social economy system change, these things will change. Uh, then another category, and, and so these things we can't preserve and not necessary to preserve. According time, according reality, change. No problem. Uh, there's some Tibetan, uh, already Kazadi, Punk um, Have t adopt their modern hairstyles like punk. Mm. <laughs> uh, one time, one is a Tibetan uh, youth from Switzerland, they say, came to see me at a Dhamsala. Uh, looks very, very modern. <laughs> <laughs> style, everything, and the dress, everything. They say, a little bit sort of, sort of the radical, modernized. <laughs> uh, but then he came, uh, and just in front of me, he said, he sit. Then he expressed about concern of Tibet, and then crying. So, so that means Tibetan spirit very much in his sort of mind. So Tibetan spirit very much alive. So certain cultural heritage, which related with our mind or emotion, that cultural heritage. I think very, very useful uh, in order to 
maintain peace of mind. And particularly when we're passing through turbulent sort of period, uh, that culture have potential or ability to keep our mind peace calm. calm. So that's really worthwhile. And the Tibetan attitude, generally, for any form, any form of life, more compassion. Of course, uh, uh, many Tibetans are non-vegetarian. Of course, the, uh, but these people, generally, very compassionate. Like some. You see Chinese now new immigrants, and also China proper. Uh, of course, there are a large number of vegetarians also there, but generally, the Chinese fund uh, everything which, which moving. <laughs> They're happy to put in plate there. <laughs> uh, so the attitude, uh, one time, one, uh, I think now, I think more than 30 years ago, one occasion, one Tibetan uh, from Kham area uh, came to Dharamsala, and he uh, to, uh, almost pleaded, right? Pleaded. Pleaded. Pleaded to me. Uh, Tibetan, now in, he noticed in Lhasa area. Now, because of large number of Chinese immigrants, now Tibetan sort of uh, food habit or style also now changing. And just in front of Potala, he saw one person selling uh, snake or some different sort of kind of fish alive, alive. in a pot. When buyer come, when customer come and pick up one, and there's punish to shasha, say punish. So there is a board with a nail um, on the on the board. Mm -hmm. Then you see, pick up one fish or so, yield, yeah. yield, yield, and push on the, on the, the nail, nail. On the nail, mm. eye, mm. just like that. And then open stomach and all the as well, yeah. un unusual thing put out, then selling. He saw that and he terribly feel very, very as well, shock, no, shock and sad. So when he came to see me, he pleaded me. Now some Tibetan also now buying that kind of thing. So please tell Tibetan, we must keep some amount of compassion, sense of concern. He told me like that. So these are not Tibetan invention, but nowadays we learned from our new master. <laughs> so now uh, uh, it is our turn. I think, eventually, if there's possibility, or potential is there, we can teach them more the meaning of the human value and life value. Money important, but money without inner peace. What use? Some my American friend, I think a billionaire, very rich, but as a person, very unhappy person. Uh. Too much worry, too much stress, and also fear like that. So external matters, external values, important, but equally internal values are very, very important. Now that, of course, in the free country, still the overall, if individual make attempt, there is sort of what's the facilities. Is it to learn, to practice, or to cultivate like that? But communist, close society, everything controlled by government, more difficult, isn't it? So therefore, now 
people of China now facing, I think, a very difficult period. Uh, and in any case, you see, that nation, since most of populated nation, uh, so therefore, you see, they have every right to build a healthy society. In that respect, I think the Tibetan culture mm -hmm. can make some contribution. Already, as far as I know, I think nearly a million Chinese already following Tibetan Buddhist practice. Mm -hmm. Yes, many. Mm -hmm. Like that. So, so therefore, I, I mean now, my, my main point is uh, Tibet House, I think, must show the, the, value. the real sort of value of Tibetan culture. And with that, I think the Buddhist concept uh, not, not necessarily take as a Buddhist religion, but rather Buddhist concept as a form of, oh, I think, good humanism. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no. uh, so uh, ethics and science. Ethics, yeah. or ethics and science. Ethics. Science. I think that may be helpful. Uh, not only for Buddhist, but also just general for the public. World at large, no? Mm -hmm. And then for that, uh, uh, some sort of uh, Tibet house should uh, uh, should, uh, should should make, I mean, should use you see, that uh, center for dialogue, for education purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's very fit for you, because you are Professor, <laughs> <laughs> so because of the professorship study, it also provides um, Professor Thurman a forum to show off his professor nature. <laughs> <laughs> Beside his strong voice, <laughs> one time, you see, uh, during my one sort of uh, talk, he uh, helped as a translator. Master. So he said, "It's just my 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 Next side." So you see, uh, during trans during that talk, you see his voice so strong, <laughs> and even after that sort of, sort of meeting in my in in my yeah. ear, some some noise, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> so then I think the living Tibetan culture yeah. uh, can be Kazoda. Can be present, Let it present it. and some sort of discussion. I think that is important. So that's just I. So I, I just wanted to uh, share. I just wanted to share with you. And then also, nowadays, so much distorted information about past Tibet. So therefore, you mentioned is some old pictures or something. Yes, no? yes, very well. So that also, oh, that also is uh, useful. Yes. Uh, to make clear about the reality of past Tibet. Yeah. Of course, nobody argue past so Tibet that is something perfect. Nobody argue that. Everywhere. Uh, there's sort of backward system and like that. But not as black as the Chinese communist city present. Uh, present, present. So therefore, uh, it is important to make clear the reality of past Tibet. So, so then I would like to take this opportunity to thank yourself and your wife and your two uh, children. No? Your children are very active uh, in your work. So I want to thank, and then, and all those uh, Supporters. Board, Supporters. Board, Supporters. Board, members. Uh, board members. Board members. Board uh, members. Board members. I want to thank, and then also those supporters who financially, or some other way, helping the Bed House. I want to express my thank, my appreciation. And I think at this moment, because of the situation, Perhaps I can express thank on behalf of six million Tibetan people. 
Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. So what next now? I what think next? Uh, time is... Yeah. Yes, I think time. Uh. Yeah, we have to... If you have Good. To go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we going to go this way? This way. Hmm? We have to come out there. I think stairs are there. This yes. way, yes. Well. And then, we, so then we're going to... Then go one thing. Oh, yes, oh sorry, one so thing. sorry. One thing, one thing, one thing. Just one want to say one thing. Hmm? Yes, no rush. No. Uh. I always you see, telling our supporters and also those people who have a genuine interest about Tibetan culture, uh, that is, since you are supporting or you are showing interest or you are showing solidarity with uh, certain culture, which I mentioned, culture of compassion culture of non-violence. So since you yourself, you see, showing keen interest about that, so in your own home, in your own daily life, uh, pay little more attention about concept of non-violence. When you have some disagreement with your wife or with your husband, Think nonviolence. <laughs> and a little, little problem here and there, or with your neighbor, think more uh, compassion. compassion and respect other as a, just another human being. So build the Tibetan cultural heritage which you have keen interest, that cultural heritage built in your own area, in your own family. Uh, that, I think, I feel, the way to, cause of, way to contribution, make contribution, make contribution for better society, happier family. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you.